it always gets postponed because something else comes up. I feel that something else is uh, more appropriate for the time, and so it always gets bumped off, bumped off, and finally I, I decided, you know, that this was going to be the message that we're going to start with, the new year, and I think it's a very appropriate message because I am truly expecting 2009 to be an awesome year. Amen? Amen. Now, the thing is this. 2009 is not going to be an awesome year for everyone in the world. There are a lot of people that will find that 2009 is going to be a very difficult year. Especially if they like to listen to uh, bad news more than good news. Especially if they don't understand grace and undeserved favor. And that you and I walk in God's favor 24-7 regardless of what might be happening outside. Amen? Because we live in the kingdom of God. And the Bible says, and of the increase of His kingdom, there shall be no end. Amen? So that kingdom just keeps on increasing and getting better and better for us as we walk in a greater reality and revelation of what that kingdom really is. Our greatest enemy is ignorance a lack of knowledge that's our greatest enemy because you and I living in the kingdom have all of these promises and benefits and privileges and glory and all the good stuff but unless we know it and believe it even though they are ours we will not see them manifest in its fullness in our lives. Amen? That's why believing is the most important thing. That's why we're called what? Believers. That's right. We're called believers because that's what we're called to do. Believe. Believe what? The good news. That's why you and I are called to preach good news or to talk about good news with other people, especially those who do not know what the good news is. And share with them and be that beacon of hope to a world that is walking in darkness to a world that is without hope and without God. They have a different God. It's not our God. He's a bad God, and He's bad all the time. And He wants to destroy them. He wants to destroy you. But you are now indestructible, amen? Because you have been given an indestructible seed, a seed that cannot be destroyed, a seed that is immortal, a seed that is holy and divine. That is in you. That seed needs to grow. It needs to grow. And that your understanding, your spending time in the Word of God and meditating on the Word and, and worshiping and, and, and so on and so forth, doing these things will bring greater revelation of ancient truth. What I want to share with you today is a topic that has also been one of the biggest problems of the church. And it's called condemnation. It is the biggest problem of the church. Now, <clears throat> condemnation is the result, or condemnation is what remains when people don't understand what Jesus did on the cross for them. And that includes believers. It includes believers. When we don't understand what Jesus did on the cross, for, for us, for everyone, we will walk in condemnation. See, what Jesus did on the cross was He took away everything that stood between you and the blessings of God. Every hindrance. The first of which is sin. But you see, sin is not our biggest problem. There is something deeper than sin. I'm talking about a believer because sin has been dealt with. It's the effects of sin, see, that we need to deal with. And one of the effects of sin is condemnation. So we may be believers and still be walking under condemnation. And we need to understand what this condemnation is so that we can deal with it. Because many times we deal with it in a manner that is ineffective. Many preachers, for example, preach against sin, thinking that that kind of preaching will stop people from sinning. And you can go back 2,000 years and find that it has been ineffective. 
The church, when you look at the church back in the 40s and 50s, and you have the, the great revivals, even of the 20s, of this, of the last, of the last century, you know, in the 1920s, and, uh, uh, even in the, in the 1800s, but even just looking at the last century, you've had great revivals, but after every revival, you will see within the next 10 years, the, the fire of the church begins to grow cold. And so we pray for another revival. And so God grants us another revival. And then within 10 years, the fire grows cold again. And so the, the, the life cycle of the church has always been like a roller coaster. See, and, and why? And what we do is often in, in times of revival, we like to preach against sin. And the problem with that is it keeps, it, it keeps us in sin consciousness. Remember what Jesus said? Your sins I will remember no more. See, he says, I'm not even going to remember it. I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to talk to you about it. And here we are preaching from the pulpit, don't sin. Don't commit adultery. Don't lie. What are we doing? We are giving the law. Instead of preaching righteousness, we are preaching sin. Now, before you stone all of these pastors and preachers, they mean well. They mean well. I'm just as guilty. I was just as guilty until God gave me a revelation about grace. I was just as guilty even in the way, you know, I, 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 raised, I was raising up my kids. And keep on talking about thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Instead of allowing them to grow up in the favor and grace of God. We have become very punitive in our ways. Let me, let me show you something about you know, the problem when we keep on talking about preaching against sin. Okay, let's start off with a verse. 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 15 verses 55 to 57. This is what it says. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We keep on preaching against sin and we use the law to preach against sin by saying don't sin. And the problem here is this. The law is a deeper root than sin. See, you can be preaching about sin, but what you're doing... Sin is just the fruit of something that is more pernicious. Something that goes deeper than that. And that something that is deeper, the root will always produce that fruit. Watch this. The sting of death is what? Sin. Sin has a sting. Sin has a sting. But you see, the thing is this. When to take away that sting of death, the fear of death, we need to deal with sin. That's why so many people are afraid to die because they feel that they're not right with God. That's why even in other religions, they have something like general absolution. What's the purpose of that? To take away that sting. The problem is that sting is not taken away by prayer. It's not taken away by prayer. Because if it were... Jesus did not have to die on the cross. All we need to do is pray. See? And here's the other problem. And the strength of sin is what? The law. So the more we preach law, the more we strengthen sin. The more you say don't, the more they do. That's the problem. That's why uh, Paul was saying, the good that I want to do, I do not. And the evil I hate, that I do. And you see, it very, it's, it's so common. We like to use children as an example. Right? You tell them, don't do that. What will they do? The very thing you told them not to do. 